All right, we're back for the ATC 90, but as you can see, it is been put on hold for a little while. We've had some things going on at the house, and so I just wanted to uh, give you an update. We are going to go right into sanding the tank since we had primed it, and uh, we'll just go right to that. All right, there's been a little bit of a lag in my filming because we had to get ready for some people coming over had to clean the shop but anyhow so we're back to it and now i'm going to show you the magic of the guide tote first thing i wanted to do is show you you know i know that when you're doing something for the first time the hardest part's getting started because you don't know what you're doing you don't know if you're doing it right you don't know if you got the right stuff but wet sanding is really easy, okay? So this is just a small little, I don't know, maybe it's a one gallon bucket. It could be anything. It could be an old paint can. And then I put a microfiber cloth in it. And the bulk of my sanding is with this hard Dura block. What is it, about four inches wide? Or two inches by four inches. You know, it's not very big. And then this is a soft block. It's got a cushy side and a little harder side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with 400 and you know if you've got 220 use 220 but then you've got to just you know finish sand back up to like 400 even 500 you know it just that you get a feel for it but basically for this hard sanding this first sanding of of this really thick primer and guide coat just to get the rough shape of this tank. I'm gonna go with 320 and then from there I'll go 400 probably before I re redo or, or re-prime the tank. So that's the kind of the, the drill. So 320 and this is the hard block and this is our first sanding. So what I try and do is I try to go one way then the other way because we're just trying to get the high spots out of here. But I wanted to show you really quickly how you're going to be able to see where the filler is going to be needed. And this is a great example. You see him. Kind of going up and down. Left and right. Angles. Just all over the place so that you're not taking it down. You know, if I was to just go like this. I'd have a low spot right here. So, a little angle. And once we get it fairly straight, then we can use a more flexible block because we've basically got, you know, this thing flat. So, you're gonna be able to see instantly where I am gonna have to fill. See that black spot? You can feel it. This would be a little bit of a low spot. You can see, you see where this is running around here? You can see that's where I had that die grinder and I took off this, the stencils, the decals. But watch, I mean, I loaded this up so much that I'm gonna be able to sand this out. Probably, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not but we'll see right now. One, with just one application of high build primer, you can get so much out. You can get so many bad little dings, dents. I mean, I went right down the metal. Now, the goal is for it to be totally light gray. 
right here I got down into the primer, the uh, self-etching primer. If I go any further, I'm gonna have trouble. So I'm probably going to spray this tank again and wet sand it because I've got so deep a groove here. But typically, if I didn't have this, then it's just a real tedious sanding to get all the little black areas out because these are gonna show up there. The gray is high and the black is low. The, th this thing dips in and you can see because of the guide coat. But if, if I sand it all the way like this, you saw those the squiggly marks here, they're all gone. So this is totally flat. This area here could be painted. You'd never see a thing and just be perfectly smooth. So now that I've got this identified, I'm gonna go over the rest of the tank and I'm gonna find anywhere else I need to fill and then we're gonna fill. All right, so I wanna go over where I'm at now. So I've worked, I worked with the 320 using the hard block and I just can't elaborate more how the guide coat works because I would typically be sanding over here where I don't need to sand. I mean, I need to get it all gray, and you can see when you when you keep sanding, and it's all gray like this with no black, no black guide coat showing up. That's paint ready. That's smooth as glass. But over here, you can see how quickly your imperfections start to show up. And again, like I said, this is where I went with the, uh, the die grinder. See, I'm going at different angles. And I'm doing this different angle approach because this is the hard block. This one doesn't give at all. And what that does is it flattens everything out. And the finish sanding I do, I can do with a, a flexible block or even by hand, and I'm not going to have uneven. I'm, I'm going to start with a really, really flat surface. But you can see that this right here is that's done. So I just need a little more sanding here. But I could be sanding on this whole spot for 20 minutes, right down to metal and not know if it's flat without this guide coat. So I'll get, I'm almost done with the first sanding. And what I have learned is that if I take it to this stage here, all the way around, like you see here, still gotta get here, but I, I can identify all the low spots. Then I can really work on them. And I'll just go ahead and show you. I don't even need to wait. But these spots here, these you can feel that they're little dense. They're little dings and dents. This is like a little crease. A little crease here. A little pinhole there. All that you'll see. If you just painted it like that, it'd look ugly. But if I continue to sand on these, these are the question marks. Do they come out or don't they with just blocking? And if they do, great. If they don't, then you've got the decision. You've got to make a decision. See, I think I'm getting close here. I don't think I'm going to get that this pass. But I'm not going to use filler because I don't need it. These aren't deep enough. If I just, when I, when I fill these deeper ones, because these will definitely need filler, and certainly this one, I'm gonna fill these, and anything else I see that, after a while you just know what's too deep and what's not. These right here I'm gonna continue to sand, but when I do the second uh, application of the high build primer, just lay it on thick, these will all be gone. Every, everything will be gone. And most of this will all be gone if I continue to sand. Like all this will be gone by the time I do the filling. I'll probably have all of this gone. Nothing here. Around the filler neck's perfect except for these two. So 
you know, that's just how it goes. That's how you do it. Uh, it's not rocket science. So what I'm going to do is finish this, this first sanding, and then we'll start to fill anything that I believe I'm going to need filler on and get it ready for the second primer. So now it's completely sanded. And this is this is perfect for applying our second run at the high build primer. But you can see I almost got that out. That almost came out. This is not going to come out. I'm probably going to put a little filler on it. But these two would probably be one that if I built it up with more high build primer, they probably would just sand out. Really, the only ones that probably could use the filler is this, this, and this. I don't see anything else on this tank that I really, this is hidden by the seat, so. So we have the filler, and now I've used this forever. It's Norton Premium Glaze, and I'm on my second tub of it and look at look at this thing it's so hard to get out and I only do a little at a time this is probably going to be a good two or three mixings because I'm not going to be able to get it all the first time and look, look at this dilapidated you know, I've been on Chico. I told him, you know, get me some more filler. And he just wants to sleep. That's all. Just wants to sleep. And mom, I'm, oh, look at that. Now we're, blow, we're blowing out of the bottom here. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we got a hardener. We'll do a little mixing here. This is going to harden up really fast because it's probably too much hardener there. But that's good. So there we are. And the applicator of choice is this little razor blade. And that'll fill it. Probably could be a little more. Scrape a little off. All right, let's get all the rest of it. See if we can fill this. I think I'm going to have to do do this one here twice. I don't know because you've got to at least feather it out a little bit. Alright, that's probably going to be really good for my first run at it. Doesn't have to be perfect. I know that this could be smoothed out a little bit better, so I don't have to do so much sanding, so let's do that. I'm going to use a clean one and just kind of look at that. That's so, no, that's not working good. Yeah, that's that's a bad blade. So just get a little a little bit of it off. Probably making more of a mess than it sands pretty easy. So well, I'm waiting for this to set up, and then we can do a sanding and see where we're at. I'm going to grab the fender and I'm going to fix the crack in it. I'm not really concerned about this 
rear fender as much as I am the tank. The tank has to be basically perfect. This, I mean, it'll be very, very nice. I mean, it'll be absolutely beautiful. But if there's a little imperfections here or there, you know, it's you're expecting a plastic fender to begin with. But this part here, we've got to fill. And then we've got to feather out. We can't have that because the sticker, when it goes over here, it needs to be flat so that you, you know, it's going to be shiny sticker. You're going to see any imperfections. So let's get sanding this area here and get some filler on it. You can see I've got this sanded with the 320, but what I've got to do is I've got some 150 and I've got to scuff this really get some good grooves in there for the filler to grab onto. And I'm going to have to feather it all the way out here probably. This is a really low spot. And I'm going to fill up these little holes. So I'm just going to give a little bit of scuffing. I hate to use like 80 grit, but I, I would on a car just to get that filler, something really to bite into. And there we go. Got it mixed up here. I'm gonna just use a popsicle stick. Put it on here. Get it all in the cracks, everything. And I'll smooth it out best I can. I think I did a little too much. I want to bring it at least out about an inch on that side. Like so. Like I said, it's, it's not tough to sand, but it's not, you know, you don't want to make more work for yourself than you do already. That's a lot. Yeah, I used a lot, but you know what? I'm just tired of having this stuff sitting around. It's getting old, I need a new tub that's a little bit better than this. So I'm going to hit a couple of other little spots in the crack above. little razor blade here. Kind of form it, shape it. I hate getting this shit on my hands, but yeah, I'm liking that right there. I'm still gonna, I think, have a little few low spots. have to fill, but I'm liking it, and it's already setting up. There we have it, a little, a little low right in there. Let me see if I can just go ahead and pop a little in there. Watch, I'll mess all this up because it's really looking good. Yeah. yeah. What do you 
you guys think? I think that'll kind of sand out. I might have a little, a little way who there, but I don't want to build it up so far that I, I lose this body line here. Yeah, there we go. And then just a little dab right in there. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. And I think I'm just a little low here. Boy, it's really setting up now. Now I've got trouble. There's trouble here now. There we go. That's, that's as good as I can get it. See, it's already already setting up that's good all right I like it while we're waiting for that fender to dry this is already to the point where I think I can go ahead and give it a little shaping I'm going to use the I'm using the very hard block here get the high spots off it does sand right out of it. I mean, you know, this has been about an hour. Sometimes it'll peel up on me. It's, you know, still a little soft, but it seems to be doing fine now. Just not so, I don't really press on it super hard. But I'm a little concerned about some of these. I might have to actually kind of dent the tank down a little for some of these high spots, but maybe, maybe not. And it's getting there. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's, because of this block, it's so flat and I know this is kind of 101 body work I'm not I'm no expert by any means but you can see how this part is still low because this is bridging across it's sanding all this area this is still low so what I do at this point is I try and get the, the edges feathered out like I've got here all the way around and then just start taking it down Start taking it down in different angles, and hopefully I can take it all the way down to where the metal doesn't show up too bad, the high spots, and I and I get down to where there's no little concave area in here. It's just totally flat. Now you can see I've got all this feathered out, and I can actually take this out. because it, it's just not going to show up. But. So there we have our fill area. And I just keep taking it down a little bit, but I'm afraid, I mean, I'm already into the metal there, into the metal there, so this is, this is probably low all the way out here, but I can live with that because that high build primer is going to give me another two or three mils high. So I'm going to just give this a little try without getting too far down where I'm starting to bottom out. Still have that little area, that little low spot there, and, and really, I'm going to fill that because I love this. This is really nice, perfectly round. Never going to see it, and then I'm just going to dab a little filler right in here, right in the top, 
I mean, I'll sand that out. I mean, I think that's that one's out. So, and this one here is looking really good, also. Set little pinholes. Got a little more I can go here. And remember, you're you're going to have another four or five coats of high bill primer to work with. You're just trying to get the big So there it is. I'm liking that. I am liking it a lot. So I'm going to do the same thing. Got it where I want it. Overall, there's two little, little deep. There's not any right there. That's just a visual. And again, the high bill primer will fill up some of that. But right here, I can feel these two. Two little dots there. Well, it's not coming off fast enough here with the 220 or the uh, the 320. So I'm going to try some 220, a fresh sheet of 220, and let's see if I can cut this down a little. I don't like to use really, really aggressive sandpaper because I think it puts such deep scratches in there that sometimes you get that lifting and. Uh, I almost think I could even go like 150 on this and not, not really worry about it. Let's see what we've got. Let's see if it's... Yeah, that's taking it down. That's taking it down. Alright, so... That's going to be a complex little curve here. I'm probably going to have to use multiple little sandpaper setup. So other than show you the hour of sanding, I'm just going to show you when I get down to where it's flat. So I've got this where the crack, I'm, I'm seeing the crack is filled. So I'm assuming the crack's going to come down here. But this is all feathered out real nice, so I'm happy with this. I'm just going to have to work on this little body line here. really got this close and I'm using the end of this hard block to just kind of run up and down this body line trying to get it as flat as I can this is all this is all beautiful and flat I just love that this body line is really coming together here, but I don't, I don't want to feel a bump here. I don't want to see a bump. So I'm going to just keep going until I kind of don't, like right there. That's about as far as I want to go because there's the crack right here. And I've got a little filler on it. That's perfect. So that, that's good. using a different direction. So I love that. I love that. And I probably I'm just gonna have to fill these these pinholes. There's some pinholes here. I'm afraid to sand them out because and then, then I won't really have the buildup I need to make this flat. This is really flat. It's all feathered in nice. So I'm gonna continue on this and I'll sand all this down in some areas over here and we'll get ready for our next batch of filler. Took me about I don't know at least an hour to sand all this inner inner area here. 
because you got to sand it to all this black, any little black dot. And I say any, I'm, I'm always experimenting with leaving things and then painting it and living with it if it comes through or learning that maybe I don't need to be so anal. But I think I've got it. I've got it super, super smooth and flat. And uh, so I'm gonna move on around to the rest of this. And I just don't want you to feel like an idiot if it took you an hour to do that on your bike because you're not an idiot. It takes that long. Or I'm an idiot and it doesn't take that long. One of the two. So here it is. It's all sanded out. And some of these I'm good with. Some of them I'm not. These are actually okay. But this right here I'll never sand out. This, this needs to be filled. And so does this. This. So there's quite a few little places. Right in here. That I can still feel. And then I'm probably going to go ahead and hit uh, all of this with primer again. So that I can sand it, you know, the object is to get it to look like this. This, this will give you glass smooth finish. And feathered like this is not a problem as long as it doesn't have a little dent. But you can see right there, that's got to be, and I could do probably another couple of applications of primer and then it would fill that in. But, you know, and this too, but... I'm just going to hit all these places, so I'm not going to show you everything. I'll just show you everything after I've hit them with the, with the body filler. As you can see, a couple of little spots or dabs. Nothing over here. But a couple of dabs here. Just to fill little pinholes. And along that crack. But it always amazes me at how much, how many sins a thick coat of high bill primer will basically remove. I mean, this thing's starting to really look smooth and nice. Once I'm done sanding all these down and recoat and do the final sand, the thing will be, it'll just be perfect. So. While that's drying, I'm going to do the fork here. Just sand it down. That's all it's going to take. It's going to be ready to paint. A couple of last minute spots. These are all sanded, so we're going to head down and start the second coat of primer. And we're all ready to mix up the second application of high belt primer. So if you remember, I used the Summit the last time for the first application. I used this Summit. And this stuff, this stuff is, goes on thick. It's really, it's tough to sand because it, it, it has peaks. It just has huge peaks. It, it's not smooth on the finish. So I'm going to go back to the Nason, which is what I really like anyway. I just tried to use up that summit. So I'm going to put this over the summit. Now we're going to see if we're going to have any issues. We have got this back up here. I started on the top a little bit, but let me tell you something. This is so much smoother than that summit stuff. I mean, this is like beautiful, smooth. The other is, was just, just like... 60 grit so something tells me that this is going to be a whole lot easier to sand now if you remember there was a, a crease right in here Let's see if we can get it to show up i think i'm seeing it 
Uh, you can see in it. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I'll wipe that off. You can see. So that was the crease. And then we've done our, our little bit of filling and, uh, and then refilling to get any pinholes. So I'm going to show you just on this because I'm going to do the whole tank and I'm sure that I'm going to be able to do that tank completely. I'm going to be able to get this completely light gray. Now I'm using the hard, the hard block here. Was 400, not 320. And the goal is to have 99% of this tank light gray with no little black specks in it. And if a little bit of the body filler shows up, that's okay. But uh, it's 400. It's working well, but it doesn't cut as quickly. I think we got it. Oh yeah, look at that. So that's just absolutely flat never see a thing in it not a you won't see a pinhole nothing that is going to be absolutely perfect so i'm going to do that to the whole tank and then we'll then we'll take a look at it and then we'll go on to the fender all right like i said i'm gonna i did the whole tank here and not i didn't this is one tank probably the first tank i've done where I didn't blow through and hit some of the underlying body filler or even metal, which doesn't really matter. I mean, if you get a little spot of body filler, you know, it's still smooth. You know, you might have to put a little heavier base coat, you know, maybe, maybe just let it get a little thicker in that spot. But I don't even do that. It comes out perfect. So... But this is nice because it didn't burn through any body filler. It's absolutely perfect. This is going to be the, one of the nicest tanks I've done. I mean, you will see zero, zero in this tank. And by the way, the sanding has gone twice as fast, if not even, even faster. It's just, it was a battle before... But this is just sanding out so nice. I can't tell you how much better that that Nason Select uh, primer is over that Summit stuff. So just a just another uh, you know testimony to the to that Select Nason primer. So I'm continuing to work on and going on down from here. As you can see, I'm getting really I'm getting everything out. I think I remember a bunch of cracking in here. I can't even remember anymore. It's just like super, super smooth. Get it wet, you can you can see kind of what it'll look like with the paint on it. I mean, it's really nice. So I just continue on. I'm going to go here and then go on down to the front and uh, just take it as it goes. But it is a lot of work. I'm really excited about this. It's just looking so good. I know this is going to lay down nice as long as I don't screw it up. But. You know, if you remember, there was a big, huge crack in here, cracking down there, and, you know, just nothing but beauty. 
So I'm excited. I can't wait to see the thing painted red, nice and shiny with that brand new seat cover on it. So next step is to sit, take it down to the booth and paint it. Everything's been wiped down with Grow Super Clean. So we're ready to mix it up. And here's the color, just in case you want to know. It's called a GM or General Motors Corporation Super Red. But I'm sitting it on. I'm sitting the camera on here long enough so you could pause it, and you could take a picture or whatnot if you want some Honda Red. And there's the reducer. So. We're going to mix that up. I'm going to give you a little bit of filming of me putting on the base coat. So hit the ball. So it's probably not laying on as much as I probably would do normally. Uh, I'll, I'll correct that on the second coat.
So this is the first coat. It looks good at a distance, but when you get up close, you can see that we need quite a bit more coverage on a lot of these areas. So we'll give it probably a second and a third coat. And uh, I'll just come back to you when I've got it all red. It took three coats of the base and what you're seeing here is one coat of clear. I had to really hide some stuff so I had maybe it was even four coats of the base. But it covered and we've got one coat of clear so far. I'm a little low on clear which kind of sucks. Uh, but I think I'll have just enough. I mean, just enough. So I'll give these two good coats. Try to get it as nice as I can right out of the box. And that way I don't have to do the color sand. You can see it's a little dry looking, but that all goes away with the second coat. You'll see the second coat. So I will shoot that now. We'll shoot the second coat and I'll show you the results. And that's the clear I'm using. Nason Select Clear 4 to 1. Just so you know. The fumes have cleared and this is two coats. Second coat a little wetter than the first, but it is shiny. And I really don't have enough enough clear to do another coat. I I think in normally I would do a third coat, but it's not going to hurt this job at all because it is looking good. And these fork legs are looking great. It's hard to do these fork legs. You've got to hold them in one hand and they're not light to try and get every area covered. And I can tell you right now, I probably don't have every area covered. Uh, there might be a little bit of dryness somewhere on these forks, but that's about it. And the headlight. It's looking good. And remember, we didn't have any primer on this. We just kind of sanded it down to uh, the metal in places. And I think it's going to come out just fine. Looking beautiful. So... There we are. We're just going to walk away from this and let it set up for a day or so. And uh, when we get the decals in, then we're going to decide what we're going to do, whether we're going to clear over the decals or whether we're just going to apply them. So that's it for this particular phase of the paint job. It's been a day and the uh, Parts are back up top here and we're looking really good especially for just rider quality I I there there's been a few jobs that I've actually done a color sand on this and applied another coat of primer or primer <laughs> another coat of uh, clear two coats actually and then a color sand on that uh, which just really makes it glass but this is good rider quality and the stickers everything that's going to go on there and the fender flaps and you know it's just going to look beautiful so 
this is a really good time to end this segment of the video uh, because we're going to go from here. We're waiting from the for the Australian stickers to come, and uh, we want to get a video out in the meantime, just so that you know the I don't have the pitchforks and the torches at my door from the fine people in Shingletown. Now I've kind of ran a parallel between Shingletown and uh, Fernley. There's a little town in Fernley here. And they, they do similar things, you know. They do mud bogs with their lawnmowers and, you know, you know really special things. So uh, it's a nice comparison and maybe this one will go out to Fernley instead of Shingletown, but I don't know. So anyhow, uh, this is it. We'll catch up on the next video where we'll stripe it and uh, put the stickers on, decide if we're going to clear coat over those, and then reassemble the bike with just a kind of a super clean on the motor and frame. So until the next time, we'll see you on the next video.